Our next guest, we've been very excited for a few days now. We've been mentioning it's going to happen. So excited that one listener who can't actually get Triple J reception has rung our station's 1-800 number and just asked to sit on hold because on hold we play the station, Terry Pratchett. She's currently listening to the interview. Wow. Now, Terry Pratchett is an adventure novelist. He's written the entire Discworld creation. Normally, most if you offered most novelists that they would have sold 30 million books around the world... 35 they, million. They'd be blown away. Well, I think you've actually... <laughs> It's my understanding is you've actually written 35 million books. Uh, it feels like <laughs> that. They've each sold a couple of copies each, so you've sold hundreds of millions. Terry Pratchett, welcome to Triple J. Hi. It is one of those things where I, I, we were talking off air, and I did say 30 million, and Terry was immediately, 35 million. Yeah, and, that, and, and mind you, that was like 10 minutes ago, so it's a yeah. bit more than that now. Do you have a constant counter, someone who's just on the phone? Uh, my agent does it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many of those would be sold outside English-speaking countries? Uh, probably more than you think. Um, I went and did, I, I went and did a, a, a signing in Poland uh, back in the summer. It was my third visit. And a thousand people turned up at one shop, which had left an hour for the interview, really, an uh, hour for the signing. Yeah. Mm. You know, and it was great. It was like rock and roll security guards <laughs> had to be called in. <laughs> um, because it wasn't just stop the fact they had to stop the signing, but they had to get me out of the building alive, you know, down in the back lift and everything, you know. No sex, no drugs, but I can listen to as much music as I want. Nice. <laughs> Do you have a copy of each of the languages that, have been, uh, that your books have been translated into? <laughs> We've got big attics that creep <laughs> under the lake. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's a nice, you know, if it's an English language, they'll like, send you two copies. Yep. Uh, but if it's Croatian, you get about 24. Yeah. <laughs> for all your Croatian so, for, friends. Well, no, I'm keeping them for when I, when but, I learn Croatian. Well, when, <laughs> when, when, you, when you first found, when you first got notice that something you'd written or your total sales had gone through one million, oh, yeah, yeah. that must have been significant. That must have been... Actually, less, you know, less, less than you think, because I used to be a journalist, and you get used to seeing your name in print, and it doesn't actually mean that much. Oh, OK. You. And every day, you, you, you know... You do your best and, and you, you write your piece and then at night the newspaper rolls and it comes out in the morning and people read it and then that's it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, well, we used to say it's, it's, it's tomorrow's fish and chip wrapping mm -hmm. and that's it. And you're as good as what you're going to write, not what you've written. As opposed what to what Will and I do on the radio, which we know goes down yeah. in folklore. Yeah. It's yeah. a Timeless permanent show. icon. To... It's uh, chiseled into stone, I think. Yeah, exactly. Guys, yeah. yeah, chiseled, yeah. By, by a team of monkeys we have in another room. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those things, you, surely you could actually teach yourself another language simply by reading your own books. I mean, you know what? They actually well, say. Nearly, nearly. I mean, I've, I've, I, um, one of the kind of sub-industries of this world is, is the plays, amateur dramatics. Amateur, well, actually, not just amateur, but I like Amdram. Um, and at any time, at any time, somewhere around the world, there are 25 to, 20 to 25 Discworld plays in production or planning. Oh, really? Uh, they've been performed in most countries and on every continent. In fact, I'm very pleased, I like the Australians, because a few months ago, the play of Weird Sisters was put on in the base in Antarctica. So now... Oh, <laughs> Antarctica. All continents. Didn't All I, continents. Didn't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and, and I've gone to see them in foreign languages, and I sit there and laugh because I can recognise the rhythm of the jokes. Yep. yep. Uh, and he said, how, how do you, you, know, do you know German? I know, no, no, but I know the gag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If there's anything you want to ask Terry Pratchett, give us a call, one 800 0 536 one 800 0 536 So you've got the books, uh, we've had amateur dramatics, we yeah. had a ballet. Um... Discworld set to a rock opera? Any oh, yeah, well, lots, lots of schools will, will, will try and rock up a Discworld play, and that, especially the one, soul, <laughs> soul Music, which is about yeah. rock music, but yeah. set on Discworld. And I've said, there, there's, there's some kids have had a lot of fun with that. This, is, this must be one of the fun things, because I've, I've re read all your books, and the great thing is you, you can take not only this uh, Discworld where you've set the characters and that sort of thing, but you'll take, you know, maybe a topic or an area that's interesting at the time, like rock music or movies yeah, yeah. or politics, or the, the latest one that I just read was all about war. Mm -hmm. And you can set, like, quite big complex issues in, like, you know... It's kind of... I mean, the thing is... It, I don't think too much about this sort of thing because I'm the writer and you just sit down there, you know, and you don't, and you don't start sort of watching yourself think too much. You just mm. get on with the writing. But lots of people do PhDs and things on, on my stuff mm. now, and I get copies of these, and they're full of long words like corrugated iron and marmalade, but I read them <laughs> sure. because, because they're telling me what I do. And I actually, yeah. I write, are you ready for this, guy? I write postmodern fantasy. Oh, really? Uh, which is kind of real posh stuff. Sure. So Did you know that you wrote postmodern fantasy before somebody told you? No. <laughs> right. So you get all sorts of insights into yourself from these scholars. Well, kind of, yeah, you know, because I never went to university and, 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 and you know, because I never had, the, you know, the Latin and all mm. that. So um, do you, like, read them and go, well, they must know, they're smarter well, than I. No, but sometimes, just sometimes they, act, you know, because I thought, my God, that actually is right. You know, they, 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 <laughs> they found these things and I didn't know I'd put them there. Yeah. But the, um, I mean, 
What it is, is, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of Lord of the Rings, quite big in New Zealand, I understand. Oh, yeah, right. Mm. Okay, yep. Well, it's kind of, I suppose, if, it, it's probably going to offend everybody, but, but uh, this world is kind of Lord of the Rings 400 years later, you know? It's like postmodern mm. fantasy. You know, you've got a big mm -hmm. city, and there's trolls and dwarves and elves and everything, but no one's fighting anyone anymore. This after making a, a buck. You know, and they work yep. in the city, you know, and the, the vampires work down the kosher butchers and the to trolls do the heavy lifting. And the, and, and the stories really emerge from, for want of a better word, a civilised background. Right. You know, about fraud or wars. Or, yeah, yeah, wars, civilised, <laughs> yeah. We, um, we've got a caller on the line, Andrew, from Melbourne, who wants to ask you a question, Terry. Yeah. Andrew, what's your question for Terry? OK, Terry, first thing, hi, great fan, all that kind of stuff. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm really nervous right now. This is how I react. So I was just wondering, were you ever actually a Freemason? Oh there boy! Hello. Secret well, no yeah. one helped the um, widow's son. Yeah, yeah, this is this is the Inquisition <laughs> apparently now. Um, uh, <laughs> I was, I was, I was I'm ever, I'm ever so I'm, I'm I'm ever so tempted to give some kind of uh, rather uh, cryptic, uh, cryptic answer. Yeah, here. Terry's not uh, saying anything right no. now, but he is giving can, you a very can good you handshake. Imagine, can you imagine any kind of society in their right mind letting in someone like me? You know, I wrote to them. I said, <laughs> I've got this hat. It's got secret society. It flashes on and off. Uh, I, and I know the question's asked because it's, it's, it's kind of a journalistic trait. You can sound as if you know more than you do. Mm -hmm. People say, you know, have you been, you know, are, are you a witch? You know, are you a pagan? Mm -hmm. and, and you say, I just know stuff, you know, just read lots of books, including books that probably, you know, you didn't think you could get and read. It's, it's just amazing what is out there if you haunt old-fashioned bookshops. So, <laughs> so... Uh, no, uh, <laughs> not now, nor have I ever been a Freemason. But I should point out, you did stress that you wouldn't come into the studio until we'd slaughtered a goat yes. and thrown a tent yeah, around. That's, that's, that's not Freemason. That's, that's rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We've got 14-year-old Liam on the Same. line. 14-year-old Liam from Belgium. What's your question for Terry Pratchett? Um, hey, Terry. Hey, Adam. And hey, Will. Hi. Um, I was just wondering uh, what you thought of other fantasies like Harry Potter. Oh, the biggest fantasy oh. series in the world at the moment. Where do you stand on Harry Potter, Terry Pratchett? I think it's okay. I think it's good. Are um, you jealous because she's now the big, yeah, biggest selling author there, JK? No, because, um, seriously not, because ultimately it's a crapshoot. I mean, I was incredibly lucky. The, 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 my, my, the book... My first book, Colour of Magic, first Discworld book, nearly didn't get published. They thought it was a bit weird. Mm, mm. But OK, then, yeah, well, we'll see what happens. So we put a weird cover on it and out it went. It was luck, pure luck. Um, and I got published at the right time uh, and, and et cetera, et cetera, and it's all happened. And the same things happened to her. Mm. Um, and the thing is, when you know it's all down to luck and you've been winning on the roulette wheel, the fact that someone's winning on the crap table next door, yeah. you, ca you can't be jealous of that. No. It's just, how, it's just <laughs> how it goes. Just at some stage, you look over and give each other a high five and just go, this is great. Well, we, we have exchanged that little glance. Uh, like, like, actually, what at your Freemasons like what, ha like, what actually happened? To this is something, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've noticed on the back of other fantasy novelists now, yeah. in the bookshop, I know when I first bought a Robert Rankin book or, like, you know, just before, these sort of people... They get a bit of, you know, the new Terry Pratchett, or people are being referred to as the next Terry Pratchett. Whoa. Well, in my experience, there's been about five or six next Terry Pratchetts. Um, <laughs> and some of them have kind of vanished. Right. Um, that's kind of weird. <laughs> and it's a kind of dumb thing. You know, everyone wants to, get, wants, they want to find the next Terry Pratchett or the next Harry Potter. What they should be looking for is the first Ira Bingle Bat or something. Yes. Yeah. Someone completely new. <laughs> not, not try and package someone as So, as Liam, you could, be, you could be the first 14-year-old Liam from Belgium, OK? Uh, All right, cheers. That's a slot there, yeah. Best of luck, mate. <laughs> can, I, can I just say that I know someone who's, like, a huge fan of yours, Terry? I, I don't actually read the books myself, but I, I was... I'm Good very, lad. Very, <laughs> 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 Stick to the schoolwork, that's the thing. We'll have a quick question from Amelia, who's 13 for Victoria, then we'll go to a track. Amelia? I know that Liam pointed that out. <laughs> what, is, what is your question for Terry Pratchett and Amelia? Um, I just want to know how you came up with the really good names and the amazing Martin is educated rodents. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, names, names are fun to do. I mean, a lot of names come from the phone book. I don't, you know, I'm not kidding. Yeah. It's amazing what weird names... No, I was in... Um, I was in, in, the, uh, in Los Angeles and I was uh, being interviewed by a guy who asked me that question. And I said, I bet you I could pick up the phone book and find a Discworld name within, you know, within yep. uh, 30 seconds. And I did. And it was Weatherwax, Granny Weatherwax out of the books. Yep. And he said, that was amazing. I said, yeah, because actually uh, there was a, fam a guy called Weatherwax who was the trainer of the dog Lassie. 
Right. Um, and uh, and I thought, well, the family must live in Los Angeles, so that's easy to find. There you go. But, but you, you, you real, you know, and you just you run names together. But in the amazing Morrison's Educated Rodents, you have a bunch of intelligent rats, um, and they kind of learn to read, but they don't really know what words mean, and they they make yeah. up their names from. The tin, the, the battered old yeah, tins so and rubbish they, they, they see on the on, on the um, on the rubbish dump, and they don't actually really know what they mean. So, and there's there's warnings on the rubbish dump too. So, one's got a name called Dangerous Beans, which I thought was a great name. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and one's got fun, fun sort of shoe polish tin, so he's dark tan, which is a bit like D'Artagnan, which is yeah. kind of a nice resonance. Very three musketeers. <laughs> um, a bit yeah. Darth Vader. And, 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 yeah, and, and you can use the names to sound that sound a bit like other names, which give you the kind of effect that you want. Mm -hmm. um, Thank, thanks yeah. for your question, Amelia. No worries, see ya. It's uh, 7 past eight. Let's play a track, Terry Pratchett. Don't freak out. <laughs> Let's have a look at the weather. This is episode 80 of the weather, then we'll talk more to Terry Pratchett. Adventure novelist, Townsville. Some rain about and 31. Brisbane, heavy showers in the afternoon, 26. Newcastle, a shower or two, 21. Sydney, partly cloudy with showers, 21. Canberra, a shower or two, 19. Hobart, fine, cool and cloudy, 16. Adelaide, fine at 27. Perth, the shower or two, 21. Darwin, an afternoon storm at 34. Alice Springs, showers and one degree for every million books Terry Pratchett has sold. 35 today. Mm -hmm. Melbourne, partly cloudy and 19. Let me ask you, Terry, I just referred to you as an adventure mm. novelist there, which either means you're writing the sort of discourse stuff or it means you're totally into extreme sports, yeah. like bungee jumping and parachuting. What do you do when you've got some spare time? What's downtime for the great novelist? You've got a day with nothing to do. Spare time. You're spare not time. Yeah. Spare you've got a day with nothing to do. You're not allowed to work. What would you do? Die, I think. Okay. Right. <laughs> is, is your work like what your keys are good? Because, I mean, let's be honest, with all the books you've written, you've probably got so much money you could just roll around it until your dying day. Uh, yeah, yeah. You just like to write? Yeah. I mean, it's more like, I mean, like, it seems a bit, um, and it seems a bit kind of uh, unfair, really, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I actually like writing. I mean, the thing is that, that um, uh, the last stage of a book, when you're doing all the editing and, and there's all those little notes you put on, like, sort this out, check this up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and all this. And then you've got, in the last month or two, you've got to do that. Mm. You're talking to editors a lot. And, okay, it's part of the job and, and, and you're happy to do it, but it's not exercising your brain in the same way that when you're starting a book. And there's a little voice in your head that says, if you're really good, if you're really good and finish this off properly, you'll be allowed to start another book. <laughs> and that's it. Um, and it... it, it it, it's kind of a, kind of like an addiction, but mm. but kind of harnessed to practice. You know, it's, it's, it's quite a nice one. It doesn't mean you know I go around fishing in dumpsters. See, I, I, I hear that voice in my head every time I see a full beer yeah. mm, <laughs> in front of me. Exactly. Yeah. You're good, and you yeah. drink this. You'll be able to have another one. I like to know just the, about the condition you write. In. Are you? Are, do you like writing complete silence? Would you have music I'm, on? No, I'm just a journalist. I mean, I can write on a plane. I mean, I can uh, you know. Uh, it, I, I like hit. I, I'd much rather hit a keyboard than, than like my hand. But but you know I've got a dinky little computer that I cart around and, and more or less in any circumstances you just can narrow your field down because that was you know years of you know, phoning in your copy from a phone box from from hastily written notes. You know it, 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 it's it, you, can, you can you can teach yourself to do anything. You don't have to have you know your special pen and your yeah. special chair. <laughs> But, but for, those, for those who do, you know, it feels like I said, it's whatever rings your bell. Gail, Gail from Melbourne's got a question. What's your question, Gail? Oh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm a Morris dancer from Melbourne. I've oh. heard that... Yeah, there you go. Um, I've heard that you've got a competition in England for the stick and bucket dance in the UK. That's right. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, it's the bucket of gold, the gold... the, the bouquet d'or. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, I... I I take the piss out of my best dancers in the books, but, but I quite <laughs> like it. I quite like. Got to be careful, Terry. They're <laughs> tough. Uh, oh, well, yeah, they, they, those bells. I mean, oh, they yeah. can really. They, you know, they, can, they can raise a blue. Those hankies. Um, well, only when they've been used for a while. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, but but I mean, I, I know what I'm talking about, and, and, and kind of you know. Taking the piss out of Morris dancers is is, an, is is a traditional British sport, rather mm. like Morris dancing. <laughs> and um, I've, I've mentioned them a few but, times. Uh, as opposed to most traditional British sports, it's one you're actually quite good at. Absolutely, because no one else wants <laughs> to do yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I've done. I mean, I've had Morris teams coming up to signings in the United States, and we, yeah, and and, and I did one. Uh, you know, because Morris dancers normally dance in the. Uh, that dance in you know in the spring like to welcome in mm -hmm. the spring and i reckon that if you're going to do it properly you know and for with, with the cycle of the season and everything you'd have to dance in the autumn to welcome in the winter and that's the black morris that you never get to hear about <laughs> and I, the and anti morris I, yeah, and, I, and i read about this in the book and and people started doing it mm. and i saw one done and they do it without 
any music. They just get the rhythm right. And it is actually creepy. You know, it's kind of, <laughs> you think the shadows are getting longer. <laughs> and anyway, um, one, there was one uh, folk festival. Um, there's a stick and bucket dance I invented on, Dis- uh, I invented on Discworld. And, and they, um, they had a... a, a um, they painted the bucket gold and local Morris teams. It, it had to do a kind of new type of Morris or a humorous Morris or something. Right, right. And it got popular. And I heard about this. And I had one made in what looks very nearly like real gold. You know, <laughs> like a special kind of brass. Ooh. And, uh, you know, the guy said to me, you want special solder, obviously, uh, because, um, you know, you don't want it to poison them. And I said, no, they're Morris men. You know, they, <laughs> it's impossible to poison them. Um, no, and it's, it's a lovely piece of work. And I think, actually, they, 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 it's on, always on display in the local pub pub, you know, but they stick little shields on it to say who it's run by. It's we've, got, we've got a question from Eve, who I think wants an apology from you, Terry, mm-hmm. if that's right. What's your question, Eve? Well, it's not so much a question, Adam. It's it's more, um, when I heard that, um, Terry, when I heard you were coming on the radio, um, I thought, oh, geez, that name sounds familiar. I come into the bedroom and I see three of your novels on my husband's bedside oh, table. Mm-hmm. Um, he reads those in between other books, mm. uh, and they are things like uh, A Short History of the World, mm. Universe in a nutshell, mm. rise and fall of the third chimpanzee, mm. yeah, yeah. discovery of the germ, hardcore geek, <laughs> science and history, and his favourite book of all time, uh, for love of insects. Right. And you know what he? <laughs> That's insects. Yeah, 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 I was thinking of mosquitoes and stuff like that. that one, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Did you reckon anyone would geek it up more than my husband? Like really? <laughs> You've met some of your fans, so is it fair to say that some of your fans are fairly obsessive, fairly geeky across the, the human spectrum? Okay. The last fan mail, last fan letter I read before coming here was written by a Carmelite nun. I doubt if she's a geek. <laughs> really? Yeah. There you go. But she's mad on insects. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. The Carmelites, I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> I... I People always assume the average Terry Pratchett fan mm. is, is, is like a, a geeky teenager. Mm. Yeah. If that was ever true, and this one's been around for 21 years now, um, it isn't true now. Um, yeah, a lot of scientists or, or people that like science tend to read Discworld, but you, you cannot spot the Discworld fans anymore. Oh. Um, you know, it's not like, you know, um, if there's a granny, in the, if, if there's an elderly woman with a, with a 14-year-old boy in the queue, for all I know, granny is introducing the kid to this world it's yep. um you uh i'm just amazed where they turn up i came to australia a few years ago during the foot and mouth epidemic the lady whose job it was to t- to make certain all my shoes were soaked in disinfection <laughs> <laughs> turned out to be a disc world fan. there you go it, it didn't it didn't stop it it didn't stop my shoes you know smelling of jay's fluid for about a week but i found something it was done with love yeah I mean, you, you find you know flight attendants and things come up for autographs you can't spot the disc world fans which is a bit worrying really <laughs>